What did Albert Einstein mean when he said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world? That's what I'm thinking. So I've been reading a book uh, that has some biographies in it. I've been reading a little bit about Albert Einstein, really some interesting things. And then uh, when I finish that up, I'm, I'm reading a book on some of the history of, of uh, the uh, stock markets and the economy. And I came across that quote by Albert Einstein. And, and the author was talking about how compound interest really works, right, and the power of it. And, uh, you know, that quote by Einstein, the eighth wonder of the world, I was looking that up trying to find, you know, con confirm the quote. I'd also seen something that uh, said that compound interest is the greatest mathematical invention in the universe, something like that. So in any event, it seemed that Einstein thought that uh, compound interest was pretty good. And why is that? I mean, I'm going to use some elementary school math to help us walk through this sort of thing. And I'm going to start with a little bit of a quiz here, right? Let's say we start with $100. And if we earn 10% interest a year, I like simple math so I can do it in my head, right? Most of us can say, okay, 10% of $100, how much interest do I earn each year, right? And all the students raise their hand. Uh, you know, 10% of 100, you earn $10 a year in interest, right? So, all right, so here's the quiz. After two years of earning 10% a year, how much money do you have? How much money have you earned, right? 10% a year, two years. 10% of 100 is $10. All right. How many people answered $21 after two years? Right. That's the right number. Right. And why is that? You think, wait a minute, hang on a second. 10% a year, 10 times 10% of 100, $10, $10 this year, $10 next year, it should be $20. Right. No. And that's where the compounding comes in. Because think about what happens here. We can pull it up on the screen even. First year, 10% of 100. Yep. You have $10. End of the year, we've got 110 bucks. Right. Now we're applying that 10% interest to $110. How much is that, right? Even us, we can do math in our head, 10% of $110, $11 in interest. At the end of two years, we've got $121, not $120. And that comp, take, I'll take it one step further, that compound, now you have $120, $121, right? 10% of that, now at the end of the year, after three years, right, you think, hey, simple interest, 10%, $10, $10, $10, $10, yep, we should have 30 bu 130 bucks. We've actually got over $133, and that's the compound interest as opposed to simple, right? And now this is stuff that we all know if you sat down and spent some time thinking about it, you'd be able to figure this out, right? It is, you know, fourth grade math sort of a thing, but it's not intuitive. We don't think about that stuff, and as you go down, that's where it gets into. As you get to, you know, compounding that hundred dollars goes to a thousand, goes to ten thousand, goes to a hundred, goes to a million. Now you start having these really giant numbers, but it takes time to get there, right? And so that is the magic of compound interest, and I think it's worth revisiting and and, re and thinking about some of those basics. So that's what I'm thinking about today. As always, I'm interested in knowing what you're thinking about. Shoot me an email or drop a comment in the comment box. And as always, thanks for watching.